<laughs> and then what do you say? And then what you do? <laughs> Girl, I would have died. <laughs> No way! Stop it! <laughs> oh my! I know! Yes! What? Oh, I'm just making some milkshakes. <laughs> milkshake? Watch your show on any TV in your house with Iris, the new HD multi-room DVR from Rev TV. Start watching in one room and pick up right where you left off in another. Call to get Iris in your house today. Bahamar delayed, the developer confirms plans for a spring 2015 grand opening. Leslie Miller defends Renward Bells. Edmund Moxie laid to rest, plus a storm alert issued for the Southeast Bahamas. We've got those stories and a whole lot more coming up tonight. I'm Vonnie Toot and NB12 starts now. Tonight, Bahamar has confirmed delays in its work schedule, meaning guests won't get to enjoy the full resort experience until spring 2015. Bahamar will instead preview portions to invited individuals and groups in December. This despite reassurances from resort officials that Bahamar would be ready for a December grand opening. Kyle Joaquin reports. After months of speculation that the resort will not be fully ready for a December 2014 grand opening, it has been confirmed that Bahama will not be 100% complete until spring of 2015. Bahama is scheduled to open December 2014. SLS at Bahama will open along with the other brands. That was Bahamar Senior Vice President of Administration and External Affairs Robert Sands just this past June, assuring that the hotel was on time for a December 8, 2014 grand opening. However, a letter sent from the resort's president Tom Dunlap to their employees yesterday states that they will only start preview openings of their facilities this December and continue additional preview openings through spring 2015. The letter goes on to read, We are in the process of determining what areas will open at specific dates between December and the grand opening celebration. We're working through details with our partners and expect to know more by October. All this after repeated denials from the resort's VP that the hotel would open on time. Back on January 19th, Sands told reporters that the project was 65-70% to 70 complete and was on schedule and on budget. December 2014. We will open up this transformative resort and we've made significant progress to date. You can see behind me uh, the buildings taking shape and every day as you drive by you see the progress. Over the next several months the resort would run into a number of issues including road payment discussions with the government and Chinese protesters claiming they haven't been paid for months. And of course there was the Morgans brand pulling out of the deal with the resort. All this and still Bahama remained firm on their stance that it would open this December. We will open on December the 8th, 2014, and we are progressing very quickly to ensure that that happens. At that time, Sands said the project was 80% complete. We're doing finishing touches to the property, a lot of civil works. Uh, we're working from the outside, inside of the hotel out, and uh, you heard it from the, both the president and the CEO this evening that we will open December the 8th. Today, Sands declined an on-air interview saying that the hotel didn't make an announcement nor did they send a press release and that the letter was intended for their employees only. In an interview with Guardian Business yesterday, Sands said the reality is there isn't a day that goes by that we ask how this project is coming along and when it will open and we felt we have a responsibility to associates to keep them in the loop. Sands also indicated that as per their heads of agreement, they are still working to hire in excess of 4,000 new workers by the time the hotel opens. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin.
Top Eyes Member of Parliament Leslie Miller says he believes Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Works, Renward Wells, was coerced into signing a letter of intent for a $600 million waste-to-energy plant by senior people who knew better. Wells reportedly acted above his pay grade by signing the document without cabinet approval and has been asked by the prime minister to resign. However, Miller, who was a guest on the Star FM radio talk show, Jeffrey, says he thinks people are making a big deal out of nothing. I think he was coerced in this so-called document that he signed by fellas who should know better, by seasoned men who has been around a long time, and they know why they would have gone to him to sign this so-called document, and he signed it. So he might have signed it out of ignorance. He might have signed it out just, just trying to be um, helpful to fellas who he knows are friendly with other people. Shit, his whole career go down the drain because of let he signed with the PSS. The government is not binding. Miller was referring to an opinion presented to Deputy Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis by Ministry of Works Permanent Secretary Colin Higgs that the document signed by Wells was more of an expression of interest rather than a letter of intent and does not bind the government to the proposal. Wells, who is the MP for Bamboo Town, signed a letter of intent with Stellar Waste to Energy Bahamas Limited, which wants to build the plant at the New Providence landfill. I support Renwood Wells. He, 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 is a, he, he, he is a colleague of mine. I think he's a, he's a very intelligent man. I think he has a contribution to make to our country. I don't think he should be cut down in the prime of his political life for something that the PS has said is no big deal. Leslie Miller also expressed concern about proposed amendments to the Constitution that will enable Bahamian women who marry foreign men to pass on their citizenship. The outspoken Tall Pines MP insisted that if his sister were to marry a foreigner, he would expect her to go and live in her husband's country instead of bringing him to the Bahamas to take a Bahamian's job. However, he would not comment when asked if he plans to vote against the bill. Some people have also insisted foreign men would marry Bahamian women just to secure access to Bahamian citizenship. However, Prime Minister Perry Christie disagrees. I don't think it's safe to assume that Bahamian women in general are so weak that they would have a man come and take advantage of them. I mean, that's not my daughter, for example. And I think that's what we have to assume. Those of us who have daughters, who have wives, um, must know that we didn't marry um, a woman who is so pliant. As a precaution, Christie said provisions would be made to ensure that foreign people who enter into bogus marriages with Bahamians would not be assisted by the constitutional change. We are taking steps to ensure that marriages of conveniences are detected and identified and citizenship will not pass. And so you're going to find, therefore, that the, the state um, will be very vigilant moving forward, period, on this whole issue um, of citizenship because we have to be satisfied we're doing the right thing. Four constitutional amendment bills were tabled in Parliament last week and will pave the way for the constitutional referendum set for November 6. The bills will institute full equality between men and women in matters of citizenship and will eliminate discrimination in the Bahamas based on sex. A good man, a great Bahamian, and a true visionary. That's how former parliamentarian Edmund Moxie was remembered today during a state-recognized funeral at the parish church of the Most Holy Trinity. Governor General Dame Marguerite Pinling, Prime Minister Perry Christie, and opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis were among those who packed the church to bid farewell to the cultural giant who helped to usher in majority rule in 1967 and created Jumbe Village. However, the struggles he faced politically were also highlighted during the somber service. Some mourners yelled shame and disgrace as Dr. Minnis recalled how the former Coconut Grove MP and senator paid a heavy personal and political price because he left the Progressive Liberal Party and never allowed party politics to define his principles. He ran as an independent candidate in 1977 and ran for the Free National Movement in 1982. And he and his family suffered immensely. I would remember that one of his daughters had applied for a job and had gotten a job at Ministry of Education. But when they discovered that she was the daughter of Edmund Moxie, she was fired. 
And another daughter was hired at Bahamas Air. And when it was discovered that she was the daughter of Edmund Moxie, she too was fired. And Edmund Moxie got a job in Nassau Beach Hotel. And when it was discovered that he worked there, he too was fired. Christie acknowledged the tension, but said as Prime Minister, he was privileged to speak at Moxie's funeral. I'm well aware of the emotions and passions that have been manifested throughout the life of our departed brother. I have distinctly discerned that some of those emotions are here present in this church. But I want you to know that I'm going to pay a tribute that is both personal and national, and one that is based on a personal and intimate knowledge and relationship with Edmund Moxie. Christie says though Moxie's political path diverged from his, they were once kindred spirits joined by a common cause. He says it, would re it was realized too late that Moxie was a true visionary. Ed will be judged not by what you have heard today, how many times he's been knocked, but how many times he got up. That's how you judge a man. Moxie released the award-winning documentary, The Price of Being a Man, the story of Ed Moxie and the undoing of Jumbe Village and the Quiet Revolution in 2012. He is survived by his wife Sylvia, two sons and four daughters. A storm alert has been issued for the southeast Bahamas after Tropical Storm Bertha formed on the Atlantic late Thursday night. Chief Climatological Officer Michael Stubb says Bertha was barreling toward Mayaguana today at a speed of 20 miles per hour. And if it stays on the track it is on tonight, the storm is expected to begin impacting Mayaguana by Sunday morning. From there, the storm is expected to begin impacting Acklands, Crooked Island, Long Key, and Inagua. Stubbs says the storm may weaken before it hits the Bahamas as the system is meeting some resistance. If the storm passes over Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic, he says, it would help to break up the intensity of the system. Bertha is the second named storm of the season. The 2014 season is projected to be below average.